Well, welcome to Man Stuff Monday. Today I'm going to take a break from our ongoing subject of man habits. I want to take on a very serious subject of these mass murders. Coming up on Man Stuff Monday. Before I deal with the subject at hand, I want to tell a quick analogy of a story. In South Africa, in Kruger National Park, there was an issue where the once uh, endangered species of elephants had become overpopulated. And the game department said, you know what, well, we've got some other parks here in South Africa that could use an elephant or two. Let's see what we can do about transporting some of these elephants from our national park here at Kruger to some of the other national parks. Well, when they uh, built the harnesses and hooked them up to helicopters to pick these elephants up and drop them off into new parks, they realized really quickly, we can't support and transport the big bull elephant. All we can uh, transport is the juvenile male and the females. So they said, well, right, we'll leave the bull elephants here in, in Kruger and we'll transport the rest of them. And so not long after they transported a bunch of juvenile males as well as some females to a new park, some strange things began occurring in those parks. Um, they, they kept on finding the endangered white rhino dead in the park, and the immediate suspect, as usual, would be your poachers. But they were noticing some things about the injuries uh, that these white rhinos had endured. They didn't look like bullet wounds. They were much larger, and they were gored much deeper, and their very pricey jewelry was still intact. So I was like, well, it can't be poachers. What is it? So they set up... Uh, game cameras all over the park. Next thing you know, they find out is these juvenile elephants ganging up on white rhinos, goring them and stomping them and killing them and doing some very unelephant like behavior. They thought to themselves, what's missing here? This isn't the way elephants are supposed to behave. And they realized, you know, one thing that's missing from their, their family ecosystem is the bull elephant. They, they, refabbed the uh, harnesses, they grabbed some of the, the large male bull elephants from Kruger and brought them to where they had, had imported the juvenile males to. And within a matter of weeks, the bull elephants began teaching the juvenile male elephants what it was like to behave as an elephant. And within a week, all that craziness stopped. You say, modern man, that's a great story, but what's that got to do with these mass shootings? Look, every time one of these mass shootings happens, we go to the same exact narratives over and over. We've got one side of the aisle arguing we should get rid of uh, the, the evil AR-15, even though statistically mass murders are least likely to happen by those and most likely to happen by handguns, but that's another subject. Or the other side of the aisle arguing for mental health and these various things. And Here's the interesting byline of, of all of these mass murders. When you go from one mass murder to the next, starting all the way back to 1999 uh, in Colorado forward to here recently in Parkland, Florida, the one byline that is in common in all those isn't the choice of weapon. It isn't even the motivation of said mass murder. These things vary and they're complicated from murder to murder, but the one byline that is consistent from murder to murder to murder that we are not addressing is the issue of fatherlessness. All the way back to 1999 in Colorado, forward to now, the one thing that is consistent from mass murder to mass murder is this one issue of fatherlessness. And we don't address this because it's not politically expedient. For those who are on the end of the gun control debate, it doesn't fit their narrative. For, the, for those who are trying to buffet that debate, it doesn't fit their narrative. Because you know why? Fatherlessness touches both sides of the aisle, and it's such a sensitive issue that, that we don't want to touch it but it's a real issue. When will we be man enough to say it's us? Because I, I want to point something out to you. We, we blame guns. We blame mental health. We blame video games. We even blame family structure. But here's something that's interesting. Our daughters have the same access to guns, have the same access uh, to, to the drugs. They have the same access to video games, and they're not the ones committing mass murders. It's our sons. Why? We don't have bull elephants. 
Guys, fatherlessness is the number one indicator for incarceration, is the number one indicator for, for gang violence, for, for murder, for unemployment. You run the gamut, you just, just do a Google search and you'll find out that fatherlessness is the number one indicator uh, of all of these social ills. But we don't talk about it because the divorce rate is so high. Fatherlessness, fatherlessness touches both sides of the aisle and it's too sensitive of a subject to talk about it, but it's a real subject and we need to talk about it. So Modern Mound Man, what, what, what's your solution like? I mean, life happens, divorce happens, what do we do? We need bull elephants. Men, I understand some of you are, are divorced and you are separated from the mother of your children and you may not have unfettered access to your sons to, to mentor them. You know, statistically, um, two years after a divorce, men just disappear. And there's some men that they're still married to their wife and they still have unfettered access to their children. And even though they are physically present, they're emotionally distant. They need the bull elephant in their life to show them what it's like to be a man masculinity is conferred one man to another. The number one question men are always asking of themselves, whether they verbalize it out loud or whether it's in their subconscious is, am I a man yet? And that question cannot be answered by their mom. It cannot be answered by their girlfriend. It cannot be answered by their wife. It cannot be answered by their homeboy. It can only be answered by a bull elephant in their life that says, son, you've arrived. Now, <clears throat> we can't fix other people's marriages. And we can't fix other people's fathers. But you can be a bull elephant to your own son. You can be a bull elephant to your neighbor. If you see a young man struggling and he, he doesn't know what it's like to be a man, be a bull elephant in his life. <laughs> this is Modern Mountain Man saying, go take your mountain.